What's up, everybody? Are you overwhelmed by the never-ending supply of depressing bad news? Well, let's refuel our tanks with seven recent positive stories. This is Giddy News for the month of June 2019. Woman 81 meets 103-year-old mother after 60-year search is the Giddy News headline courtesy of RTE Ireland, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Eileen Mackin, an 81-year-old Irish woman, grew up in an orphanage and had never met her birth mother. But then earlier this year, Ms. Mackin said that with the help of a genealogist, she had managed to find her mother, who was 103 years old and living in Scotland. Uh, so Ms. Mackin traveled to Scotland with her husband, George, along with her daughter and son-in-law to meet her mother, Elizabeth. Uh, Ms. Mackin said that she was thrilled upon meeting her mother and that her mother never let go of her hand. She also said, I don't think I'll ever come down out of this cloud. Germany is opening its first electric highway for trucks, is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Ivana Kodasova with CNN Business, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A system that allows trucks to draw electric power from overhead cables went into operation on 10 kilometers of the Autobahn. The system allows big rigs with special equipment mounted on their roofs to connect to electrified lines while traveling at speeds of up to 90 kilometers per hour, which is approximately 56 miles per hour. The trucks run on electric motors when connected to the overhead lines and a hybrid system when they return to a traditional road. Sensors detect when the overhead wires are available. It's a practical way to reduce emissions and energy consumption in places where railways aren't feasible. Tests and demonstrations of the e-highway technology have also been conducted on a smaller scale in Sweden and near the U.S. ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Carolina Panthers tight end Greg Olson donates $2.5 million to Pediatric Cardiac Center is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Kyle Newport of the Bleacher Report, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. The Atrium Health Foundation announced the Greg Olson Foundation had donated $2.5 million to help build a next-generation pediatric, cardiovascular, and congenital heart outpatient clinic at Levine Children's Hospital. And this is just the latest charitable act by the 34-year-old NFL star. Olson and his wife, Kara, established the Heart S. Yard Initiative back in 2012, and the purpose was to focus on the home health care for children, with congenital heart disease. The Olson's Heart Test Yard Fund donated 750,000 in November of 2017 to create a cardiac neurodevelopment program at the Carolinas Medical Center. Nancy Doberle, medical doctor, called the new clinic a game changer for the children of the Carolinas. Seven Mile B Corridor coming to London to boost declining population is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Jacob Jarvis of the Evening Standard and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A seven mile bee corridor of vibrant wildflowers is being planted to encourage the insects population in London. The pathway for bees will be formed of 22 meadows sown through parks and green spaces in the northwest of the capital. Worldwide bee numbers have been on the decline in recent years and scientists blame a range of factors including insecticides, parasites, disease, climate change, and lack of a diverse food supply. Bees are critical pollinators and food making up about a third of the human diet is from plants that are pollinated by insects. Counselor Krupa Chef said, Bees and other insects are so important for pollinating the crops that provide the food that we eat. We must do all we can to help them thrive. Blood test detects onset of Alzheimer's a decade early is the Getting News headline courtesy of Alyssa Sauer and a link to the source will be included in the description below. The latest blood test to detect Alzheimer's may be able to predict the disease 10 years before symptoms occur and with 100% accuracy. Researchers from the National Institute on Aging are focusing on a protein in the brain called IRS-1, and it may signal the earliest stages of Alzheimer's. IRS-1 plays a critical role in insulin signaling in the brain, and it's commonly defective in people with the disease. The blood test is still in the early stages of development and will require a larger and longer study before it can be used to detect Alzheimer's. The lead author of the study and neuroscientist at the National Institute on Aging, Demetrius Kapagianis, says, we will need replication and validation, but I'm very optimistic this work will hold. 74-year-old Japanese farmer stocks vending machine daily with homemade curry rice for hungry travelers. 
is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Big Nico with Great Japan and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A lone vending machine located off a highway in Awa City is warming the hearts of travelers. Tadashi Yoshimoto, a 74-year-old farmer, stocks his very own vending machine with rice that he grows just down the road. Yoshimoto refills the vending machine twice daily with his carefully prepared rice and a package of curry to provide homemade meals for truckers and anyone else who feels hungry. Yoshimoto has been running his farm to vending machine operation for 40 years, and he has no intention of hanging it up anytime soon, saying, as long as my body and my vending machine works, I will continue to do this. Thanks to women, India is on its way to beat all voting records, is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Sangeeta Tanwar of Quartz Online, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. India's 2019 parliamentary election sees the highest voter turnout ever. Women voters, previously missing from electoral process, mostly due to various socioeconomic reasons, have come out in huge numbers this time. And what's also interesting is that young voters, a segment that is historically seen as a reluctant group, are also out in higher numbers. And this proves that extensive and continuous campaigns by multiple stakeholders, such as the election commission, government, and the civil society at large have succeeded. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the Giddy News. And if you have a positive story that you'd like for me to share, please link it in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.